Hello, I'm Rafa Sardina. We're at After Hours Studio, my studio facility in Los Angeles, in Woodland Hills, Los Angeles. And welcome. Uh, here I operate a recording studio, mix room. Um, we're tracking capabilities. I do everything from tracking drums to uh, smaller string sections to anything in between. And also mix a lot. Uh, I'm an SSL equipped uh, studio, so have you know, uh, you know, bigger mixing capabilities uh, than the average, you know, home studio. Uh, I have an SSL 900 AWS, uh, a lot of vintage uh, equipment. And you can see it in the back. Lots of stuff from the 50s through the through the 70s. As also some of the newer stuff, of course. And I'm, a, I'm based on Pro Tools. Uh, I use Pro Tools, also I use Logic, but uh, those are my two platforms mainly. Uh, but obviously the, the, the biggest standard these days is still Pro Tools, so that's the, the main system I, I usually use in the studio. Here is some of my uh, some of my gear. Uh, this is my Pro Tools rig. It's in an ISO box, and, you know, uh, with air conditioning and all that because it runs pretty hot. I have a lot of Apogee converters, which uh, I'm a big fan of. Uh, have an SSL, you know, a dynamic track on top that I use, in, you know, combined with my SSL board. And some of my gear, outboard gear, I have, I use here is, uh, I have, I'm a big fan of the esoteric audio research, you know, tube equipment, um, which, uh, you know, they have the 660 kind of like uh, following the trend of the Fairchild 660, you know, Pultec style EQs. I also like a lot of the, the gear from DW Fern, uh, the red pieces, you know, I have their compressor, the VT7 and the VT4s. And Summit, Summit gear. I'm also a huge fan of Summit. You know, I've been using Summit since I started in, you know, in this business uh, 20 plus years ago, and it's still one of my first go-to pieces of gear. Following, you know, a Dynamics and EQ. I mean, I have another great tube company, Inner Tube Audio. Staying a great guy, you know, he builds a lot, you know, drummer with a new piece. Actually, there are just to prove that there are some new pieces that really are awesome, you know. Uh, this is a fairly new piece, it's only like a year and a half, two years old since it came out, and it's a multi band tube compressor. Um, the all usual suspects, you know, GML and Crayson, another great company, uh, Altamoda, uh, Fox Ride, and Lee. Great, great stuff to the money stuff. Uh, and some of the older pieces of gear, you know, from the 70s, the Sphere EQs uh, from the 70s, uh, some Nibs, more manly gear, you know, and Nib stuff, uh, and, and more of the esoteric audio research. Then for for effects, external effects, I, I have some of the funky older pieces of gear, like the AKG BX5, you know, Spring River. Old school Spring River, the Flanger Doubler from MXR, um, Sampling River from Sony, uh, quite, quite an old cat, you know, uh, it's probably gonna be retired pretty soon, uh, but it still works great. Uh, some even tied, you know, uh, the Bricasti stuff, I really love the Bricasti stuff, some of the best newer stuff that has come out to the market in the past five years. And then some of the older stuff, you know, Lexicon 960L and some of the older pieces like my Eventide 2016s from the 80s. I still still use them in every single mix I do. <laughs> it's one of my basic pieces of gear. And a very unique piece out here which uh, not many people have seen around, which is one of the first digital river ever made. The EMT 250, 251. And it's still operational as day one and working great. Though it's a very small, not the small, but you know, medium sized space, it still, you know, can fit a drummer, you know, a guitar player, and a bass player. And I do a lot of those kind of sessions, you know, especially for rock music and, and pop music. 
And even for uh, for blues stuff, you know, I've been recording with Al Blake, Fred Kaplan, those cats, and you know, I, for one time I had like six people in here, believe it or not, you know, jamming their instruments with an upright piano on the corner and you know, doing their thing. Um, my black hole, you know, uh, hanging in there, and some of the other stuff. Uh, and other than that, I have, you know, two other rooms upstairs that are part of the, the whole studio complex that are linked to the studio, so I can do, not only do tracking here, but I can do tracking upstairs, and I have cameras, so everything is linked, and I can have even different people in different rooms if necessary. So it becomes very, very handy. Lounge, extra space, you know, uh, basically a lounge, you know, for people to hang, hang out and all that, but it's also an office, you know, lounge, recording space, uh, uh, everything is wired with the studio, so I can have people here, you know. Sometimes people even feel more comfortable being in a non-studio environment kind of room, so it has happened to me where, you know, even a singer preferred to record vocals here, even though he's not as well treated as the main studio downstairs, so it comes very, very handy. I'm here with the guys from JC Microphones. Uh, I'm an avid JC uh, Microphone user. I've been using it for a few years now. Uh, and it's one of my newest, one of the newest additions to my studio. Uh, I have basically been using uh, mainly three of the JC microphones they came out with. One of them is the Black Hole. That's the first microphone I, I encountered and I started using. Quite a fantastic microphone, very versatile microphone. Uh, and not just because of the polar pattern capabilities, but you know, even the off-axis response and all that. I've been experimenting quite a lot with that. The other microphone I have been using uh, is the second one in line they came out with, which is the BT-201 pencil microphone. Very handy with different capsules, uh, very ingenious. You know, they came out with this magnet type of capsule swap system. And I've been using these microphones actually for many, many even non-conventional uses, you know, from, you know, from the first uh, Things that come to mind when you, you you get you know a pencil microphone. Obviously, I use it for guitars. I use it even for the higher string, you know, higher pitch instruments. There, it's really really great uh, for banjo, mandolins. I use all those kind of instruments to disguise them, you know, as even as acoustic guitars, you know, in pop productions, even rock productions. Uh, and I've been using them to create some MS, you know, kind of techniques and all that. So it is a very very handy microphone. And the, and the capsule swapping uh, capability is really ingenious, as I said. The newer microphone I've been using, which is, uh, which was quite a revelation because I'm a big collector of vintage microphones. I have uh, my older, you know, kind of microphone, Newman M49s and U47s, and, and you name it, you know, AKG C12s, you know, the old, old ones and all that. And one that really came as a revelation is the new V47 microphone from JC Microphones. I've been using it quite, quite, quite a lot. So, very, very warm sounding uh, microphone uh, and a great addition to the collection, as I'm saying.